Ranger Shannon stands in the prairie. Behind her are dried grasses, bare trees and branches, and some full evergreen trees. The sky is gray and cloudy and the ground is snowy. She records her observations about one of the evergreen trees with a pen and a notebook. She smells and touches the trees before writing observations. Oh hi! Welcome to Fridays with the Ranger! I'm Ranger Shannon with Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm so glad to have you joining me. So what I'm doing out here today is I'm actually nature journaling. Have you ever done nature journaling before? Well, get ready because I'm going to show you how. Do you keep a journal at home or maybe some kind of diary? What do you write about in your journal or diary? Maybe you write about what your day was like or anything new that happened or just any thoughts you're having in this moment. So we're going to do something very similar while nature journaling. The main difference is we're just going to try and observe the environment around us. You kind of want to view it from a fresh perspective, as if it's something you've never experienced before. By doing this, it's going to be like becoming an honorary Corps of Discovery member. They pass through all kinds of new landscape every day and encountered new wildlife, new plants, new animals, new landscapes, and new weather constantly during the Lewis and Clark expedition from 1803 to 1806. This is sort of our way of becoming honorary Corps of Discovery members. Shown is an illustration of Captain Meriwether Lewis, Captain William Clark, and President Thomas Jefferson looking over and discussing a map together. Journaling was one of the main assignments for Captains William Clark, Meriwether Lewis, and other Corps of Discovery members to complete during the expedition. Shown is an illustrated map of North America showing the route taken by the Lewis and Clark expedition from St. Louis, Missouri to Fort Clatsop in Oregon country. Also shown is the Louisiana Territory and Spanish possessions in North America. Since the United States gained new Western territory through the Louisiana Purchase, President Thomas Jefferson wanted the expedition to take detailed notes of what they saw as they passed through this undocumented land. Shown is a man's hand using a quill pen to write in a journal by candlelight. President Thomas Jefferson requested they document all the new landscape, plants, animals, people, and weather that they came across. To do so, they took very detailed field notes of whatever they observed. Shown is a photo of a leather brown journal with a quill pen resting on top, a golden hand telescope, and a wooden compass laying on top of a buckskin hide. Unfortunately, some journals perished during the expedition due to weather and other difficulties they faced, but most of the ones that survived the journey home are housed at the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as well as the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, Missouri. Currently, the complete journals of the Lewis and Clark Expedition are available to view online for free, which is linked in the description box below. Shown are five Corps Discovery members arriving by boat to Mandan Indian Village. A Corps member stands at the bow of the boat and greets two Mandan Indians standing at the shore. In the distance are three other Mandans and their huts resting on top of Plains Hills. It's important to note that while the land, plants, and other wildlife were new to the expedition, the American Indians that had lived on these lands for generations were very familiar with them, had names for them, and incorporated them into their daily lives. The Corps often encountered these American Indian tribes as they passed through new territory, and the native names they used are written in the journals. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to get started. Now, first of all, I want to let you know that you can nature journal any way you want and in any environment you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be nature. You could observe a room in your house. You could observe a museum. You could do anything you want. You could even do a picture in a book or a place you've always wanted to experience but haven't just by looking it up. Now, also for journaling, while I'm going to be using a paper nature journal, I actually have mine right here, which I've decorated and made using Ranger Bailey's tutorial on how to make a nature journal in binoculars, which I will link in the description box down below. It's very easy to do. 
but you also don't have to be using a pen and paper to journal. You could record it on your phone in a video or an audio recording. You could take pictures. You could draw a picture. You could even simply tell someone about your experience. So do whatever feels best for you and whichever feels more fun and more creative for you. Now, also what you're going to need is a nice quiet space to observe. So I talked about some of the locations and while you're viewing these spaces, I'm going to give you some prompts to get you started. And I'm going to show you how to use different senses in order to experience the environment around you. Now you don't have to use all of your senses, but you can use the ones that work best for you. So let's get started. Shown is a close-up image of a mule deer with some evergreen trees in the background. For our nature journaling, we're going to use our five senses in order to notice as many details about our environment as possible. We will record these details in our journal to remember what we observed. Do you know what the five senses are? They are sight, which uses your eyes, sound, which uses your ears, taste, which uses your mouth, smell, which uses your nose, and touch, which uses your hands and skin. We're going to focus on each of these senses one at a time while we're journaling to really observe what we're experiencing. Again, you don't have to use all of your five senses for nature journaling. You can use the ones that work best for you. Shown is an image of a fertility butterfly feeding from bright orange milkweed flowers. Okay, are you ready to use your senses? Grab your journaling supplies, let's get started. If you're unable to observe an environment, object, or image around you, I welcome you to use the images and sounds that I'm going to share as we nature journal together. Wherever you decide to journal, make sure the environment is safe for you. We don't want anyone to get hurt or harmed in any way. Have an adult help or supervise you in your environment if needed. Again, you can also simply use a picture or video from a book, magazine, or the internet and imagine what it must be like to be there. Do whatever works best for you, and don't be afraid to get creative. Let's start with sight. Close your eyes for 10 seconds. Now, open them. What do you see? Shown is a video clip of a clear blue sky with fluffy white clouds passing through it. Shown is a video clip of dried prairie grasses blowing in the wind. The ground is partially covered with snow and there are various evergreen trees and other bare trees in the background. Now, let's move on to sound. Cover your ears for 10 seconds. Make sure you can't hear anything while your ears are covered. Now, uncover them. What do you hear? To really hone in on the sounds around you, try keeping your eyes closed while you're observing what you hear. It's time for taste. Stick your tongue out. No, not onto anything, just into the air. What do you taste? Again, please don't taste any objects in your environment. They might be harmful to you. Shown is a video clip of the wide open prairie. It's covered with dried grasses. In the background are various clusters of evergreen and other trees. The ground has some patches of snow, and to the left is a close-up of a dried evergreen tree branch swaying in the wind. Shown is a video clip of a snowy patch on the ground. Some rabbit footprints can be seen. Around the snow are dried prairie grasses and various dried leaves and branches. Are you ready for smell? Plug your nose for 10 seconds. Please still breathe through your mouth though. Now, unplug it. What do you smell? You can smell the air around you or some of the objects if they're safe. 
Shown is a video clip of some tall trees forming a shady canopy in the prairie. The trees have sparse branches, some of which are full of pine needles. Shown is a close-up video clip of a tree trunk with a few branches covered in pine needles. Let's finish up with our last sense, touch. Notice the ground and objects around you. Touch them with your hands or skin. What do they feel like? Again, make sure the objects aren't poisonous, sharp, or dangerous in any way. In addition, you can describe how the environment around you makes you feel personally. Are you happy, scared, excited, relaxed? Record these entries in your journal. Shown is a close-up video clip of a cluster of yellow berries on a dried branch. Snowy ground and dead, wet grasses are seen underneath it. Shown is a close-up of a thistle-like plant. Its flower is a cluster of white, fluffy pollen. It sways in the wind with some dried prairie grasses. In the background are some evergreen trees. How did your nature journaling experience go? Were you able to use all or most of your senses to record the world around you? Was there anything that was difficult for you? Or did you find anything new and interesting that you hadn't noticed before? Let us know in the comment section down below or on our Facebook or Instagram page. Now that you've completed this activity, congratulations, you are an honorary Corps of Discovery member. Great job. Captains Lewis and Clark and the rest of the Corps of Discovery could have used a crew member like you to help with the expedition. I hope you save your entry from today for forever. Who knows, maybe thousands of years from now, someone will find it and they'll get to experience the world through your eyes. I bet it looks a lot different from what their world is like now. I hope you enjoyed this activity and can use it wherever you go. Don't limit yourself to just doing the outdoors around you. Use it when you go to new national parks, sites, or monuments, or any new outdoor experiences you have. In fact, use it for any new experiences you have in general, and try all different ways of recording it. Do a voice recording, a poem, a song, a picture, whatever you like. Just make sure to keep it. Thanks so much for joining me for this week's Fridays with a Ranger. I had so much fun doing this activity with you, and I hope you did too. Stay safe and have a great weekend. Bye!